What happens in Vegas hopefully stays in Vegas for UCLA over the weekend in the Continental Tire main event. Eh, not the best of showings. Not the worst. Could be better. Let's talk about it. Be like Mick Cronin. I'll tell you the truth. You are locked on UCLA. Your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey everybody, it's your favorite host, it's Zach Anderson, Yoxhammer, as we bring you Locked On UCLA. Thanks for making it your first listen each and every day. It's free where we get your podcast, and it's available on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe. This episode is brought to you by Upside. Download the free Upside app, use the promo code Locked On, use the promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. UCLA in their first true test of the weekend, first true test of the season in the 22-23 campaign, found themselves on the wrong foot. It wasn't exactly a banner weekend for UCLA men's basketball and football. We already discussed the the sadness that was the football team. Now here they are for UCLA basketball. Mick Cronin, the Bruins, well, they got the real test. They got in a fight against Baylor, a fight against Illinois. And while some may have hoped it would have been Baylor in this quote-unquote four-team tourney championship game. It was UCLA who ended up being the odd ones out, dropping out of the top 10, tumbling almost out of the top 20, and being out of the four teams there, the only winless team out in Las Vegas as UCLA will return to Vegas later this year, later in the season for the Pac-12 tournament. Hopefully a much more complete team, rejuvenated team, and a better team come that time of the season in March. Mick Cronin, blasted his team after the game against Baylor when it came to defensive effort. Well, let's look at those defensive efforts. UCLA losing 79-70 to to Illinois in a game in which in the end of the first half, they led by nine as the Bruins ended up losing by nine if after it all and then losing 80-75 to to Baylor. So two games where the Bruins practically gave up 80 points overall, if you bump up Illinois to one more point, gave up 50 second half points to the fighting Illini and to Baylor, a national champion a couple of seasons ago. They came in top five team after their loss to Virginia, ready to play and put points on the Bruins for a UCLA team who coming into that weekend had been allowing closer to under 60 points per game, closer to 50. If I got my math correct there, closer to 50, a little under 60 points per game versus what they allowed against top tier competition out of the Big 12, out of the likes of the Big 10, who UCLA will soon play in their future scheduling against Illinois. And that's how the competition will be week in, night in, and night out. And the Bruins were pretty much exposed, one, with the veterans not playing extremely spectacular outside of Jalen Clark's explosion offensively against Baylor. And then you had the freshmen who were truly, truly, truly exposed. And while you don't really want to harp too much on how they look five games into the season, it was clear that the Bruins were not ready. And I did an expectations episode about how far this UCLA team can go and with how bad the Pac-12 is in basketball this season, at least how they've started. Nine of the 12 teams in the Pac-12 have lost to a mid-major. 11 of 12 Pac-12 teams have already suffered a loss, Arizona not included, as they now will go play San Diego State in the Maui Jim Maui tournament. So they could very well be the 12th and final team to fall for the Pac-12. So this is, from top to bottom, not the best year in the Pac-12. For the most part, it looks like Arizona and UCLA will be amongst, one would think, the teams to carry the conference throughout this 22-23 to campaign, picked to be amongst the top of the conference. UCLA, Arizona, the only two in the top 10, in the top 25 come the start of the year. Bruins almost falling back. And now here UCLA is needing to get better moving forward down the end of the year. Well, what are the freshmen have to do. One, it's going to come down to how efficient Amari Bailey 
is scoring the basketball. And between Adel Bona and Dylan Andrews, even a brief moment from Abramo Zonka, the, the international import, you have UCLA versus Illinois. Combined between the freshmen in that first game of the tournament, as Mick Cronin was already alluding to in his media availability, how, hey, this is freshmen, their first game away from Pauley Pavilion, and how are they going to fare against better competition? And as Mick Cronin put it after the Illinois game, they were celebrating that they're number one in the nation, quote-unquote, not officially word for word, but he was saying they're celebrating after the Norfolk State win like they're top dogs. And each year, each game, you have to prove it and make yourself worthwhile to make it to the dance. And then once you get in the dance, you hope to get on a run. The UCLA freshmen combined for six points, four turnovers, two of nine shooting against Illinois. So in their first game away from home, including the exhibition, we don't even include the scrimmage. It was the freshmen who did not have a banner day. Adam Bona led everything when it came to freshmen, five points couple of blocks of steal and two of three shooting, although he only played 21 minutes with three personal fouls. Amari Bailey went 0 for 5, six rebounds, but three turnovers in one point. Dylan Andrews in three minutes of action, missed his shot and turned over the basketball in a game where it looked like UCLA was maybe going to win decisively if you only watched the first 20 minutes. And then all of a sudden, it just clicked for Illinois. One for the Fighting Illini, they got red hot in the second half. Almost made all their free throws, 11 free throws, a bunch of threes, and shooting nearly 60% in the second half with an effort that Mick Cronin was more than just sheerly unsatisfied with because he voiced his displeasure after the Baylor game when UCLA gave up 51 second half points. Bruins only going three deep off the bench with Kenneth Nuba, Dylan Andrews, and David Singleton off the bench. So the freshmen, with this short rotation for McCronin, seven, eight guys getting in, largely just six guys between the starting five and David Singleton, David Singleton Tiger, Campbell, Hawkins, Clark, Bona, Bailey, and Singleton. The freshmen were not really trusted other than Bailey and Bona, and they did not step up in a game where, all right, you want to rely on your veterans maybe early. Hope the development of the freshmen comes quickly because in the day and age now of college basketball, not only is it the one and done, but the one and done transfer portal going with everything. UCLA was not ready to play with their freshmen going against Baylor. Uh, excuse me, against Illinois and also a little bit against Baylor. Tiger Campbell, 22 points on 23 shots. Jaime Hawkins Jr., 20 points. On 22 shots, those guys combined also for nine assists to go along with eight of UCLA's 15 turnovers. So while the freshmen were no show against Illinois and against Baylor, where UCLA lost by five against the Bears, freshmen did a little bit better. It was the veterans that Mick Cronin was calling out. It was the veterans. That was that were getting called out. So mind you, Bailey did play a little bit better. Five points in the second game of the weekend. Bona with two points in only 14 minutes. And even Dylan Andrews in 15 minutes putting up seven points. And a variety of redshirt freshmen and players getting mixed in in game two. A lot more players getting on the floor for UCLA. Ten total bodies getting in some action. However, it was the veterans that Mick Cronin was so displeased with. We'll get to Hawkes and Tiger Campbell in just a minute, but with the lack of the freshman success early on, you wonder how much upside there is. Well, there's plenty, plenty, plenty of upside with UCLA's upcoming games to build. You've got Pepperdine, you've got Bellarmine, and then you've got the likes of Pac-12 play starting with still crucial non-conference games and big-name opponents awaiting in just a month. But speaking of upside, has inflation hit you where it's hurt? Got the holidays coming up. Are you driving less? You might be driving more. Are you dining out less, buying less groceries? Well, there's nothing fun about less, like UCLA coming away with less than one win over the weekend for both football and basketball. And if there's nothing fun about less, that's why we should all be using Upside. It's an incredible app for anybody who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. And with upside, you don't have to cut. You don't have to cut back. Not with upside. 
You can get cash back on every purchase. To get started, download the free Upside app. Use the promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. In comparison to credit card rewards and loyalty programs, you can earn more than three times cash back with Upside. All you have to do is download the free app, use the promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Again, $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using the promo code LOCKED. Go download Upside now. All right. Well, the upside for the Bruins still very high, as I already mentioned here on Locked On UCLA, talking basketball today and their flop out in Las Vegas. You were hoping either one, the victory of either a football game or one, if not two victories for basketball, would have uplifted UCLA. It was the women who did good for UCLA, but today we are still talking about the men and their Vegas trip, but it was UCLA women. Got to shout them out. Briefly, we'll, we'll talk about them throughout the season, but they got ranked and they went unbeaten, I believe, in the battle for Atlantis. So the UCLA women, shout out to them. They had a good weekend. The men in UCLA athletics, at least in football and in men's basketball, not a good weekend. Let's get to it. The veterans who Mick Cronin called out, and let's let's get to Mick Cronin's comments from the post game after the Baylor game. And this is largely some of the freshmen too, but... I tell, I tell guys the truth. This is what McCronin said. I tell guys the truth. I'm not very popular in this era, era, but I don't care. The problem is, to really give you a truthful answer is, they'll be told that I'm the problem from their outer circle, that they're all great players. So you've ultimately got to recruit guys who do what they need to do to get better and win games like this. If you want to be a real program, but in our era of basketball, it's okay whether you win, lose, or draw for a lot of people because they could care less if we win. It's all about a guy getting his and his stats. And the goal of coaching is to overcome that. Well, that's what Mick Cronin's, those were Mick's Cronin, Mick Cronin's words after the Baylor game, after the frustrating two loss weekend where he was heard from two doors down, multiple rooms away out in Las Vegas with how displeased he was with this team's performance on a neutral site in Vegas where not only was his team outnumbered, was the Bruins fans were outnumbered in Vegas despite being very close to, not very close, but close relative to the teams they were playing to Las Vegas. And UCLA had a poor weekend. But he largely, after those quotes, or within those quotes, added on and talked about how he was displeased with his veteran leadership. Because, all right, the freshmen, freshmen are going to make mistakes. Coming out of high school, you can be highly touted. You get all the love. And Amari Bailey, yes, yes, yes. Dembona. Even McCrona was hyping up a Dembona on separate podcasts and stuff, saying he is elite. Dylan Andrews has to grow into a role. Even Abramo Zonka coming in later for the Bruins. And yet here the Bruins are. Three and two overall. The sky is not falling. Yet, there was Mick Cronin who loves any time he can get something bulletin board or when there's a frustrating performance, he will light into his team to build, to get better, and to grow as a team because they need to be better in these moments, which is where UCLA wasn't good when they needed to be against North Carolina late in the game in the Sweet 16. How the Bruins were so almighty good in the NCAA tournament run getting to the Final Four in 20 and 21, those grinded out moments where they had to play defense against teams that were deeper and arguably better in 20 and 21 going to the final four while UCLA went through an end of season skid, barely hobbling into the tournament and going on a run. How Mick Cronin took his and his team took his licks in that first year in 1920. They started eight and nine back in 2019 and 20 and then built themselves into a second place finish in the Pac-12 before COVID canceled all the conference tournaments and eventually the NCAA tournament. UCLA and Mick Cronin, he wanted to lean on his veteran leaders. Jaime Hawkins Jr. and Tiger Campbell in that weekend combined, well, Campbell at least himself, Campbell 36% shooting from the field. That's not good considering he took over 23 shots, took 23 shots against Illinois 15 shots against Baylor and was well below 40%, 30% for the weekends. 
into 36%, not from three, but from the field goal as a whole, and had seven turnovers. Jaime Hawkins Jr. played 39 minutes game one, put in 20 points on 22 shots with three turnovers, and to play with four personal fouls. Hawkins Jr. then only played 26 minutes, 15 points and 11 shots in the second game. So while a large part of it is everybody's excited and happy that Hawkins looks good with the bounce, with the offseason and ankle recovery and the training and the rehab, he's been looking good. But a large part of it was McCrony just saying, all right, the leaders, the leaders, the leaders. Well, who are those leaders? Well, the two who went to Pac-12 Media Days, that falls on the shoulders of Tiger Campbell and Jaime Hawkins Jr. This isn't the same veteran team that came back from a year ago from that Final Four team that built into a team that was expected to, quite honestly, go deeper than the Sweet 16 before they ran into a buzzsaw that was North Carolina in the back-and-forth game in March of this year. And then another leader, the junior from Riverside, Jalen Clark, is another one who the, not necessarily the blame, but who Mick Cronin could be poking out and calling out a little bit. Mick Cronin, you look at Jalen Clark's numbers, especially against Baylor, he had a nearly career-high day when it came to scoring the basketball. 23 points, two off his career high of 25 against Washington. He didn't hit a three, but he was 10 of 14 from the field, was Jalen Clark. No turnovers, but the glaring missing elements for UCLA's defense this weekend, or the most recent weekend, against Baylor and Illinois, despite Clark's offensive heroics leading the team in scoring against Baylor in that five-point loss against the Bears. Jalen Clark, over the weekend in two combined games, had one steal and one block between two games where he played almost every minute but five or six or seven or something like that. Jalen Clark coming into that weekend in Vegas had 13 steals through three games, albeit against different competition, yes. But looking back at Jalen Clark's Last 19 games through the games this last weekend, he has steals in 16 of those 19 games overall. That's how impactful Jalen Clark is and can be defensively. So that was one of those missing elements the Bruins did not have on the defensive side of the floor. And I know he wasn't pleased with this freshman, as we've already talked about, and with him calling out his team. And he always finds ways each and every year to call out his team and light a fire going forward for the Bruins if he can find any quote-unquote bulleted board material. Well, here they are, back-to-back big losses, not big losses in terms of margin-wise, but back-to-back losses where the freshmen didn't truly perform, including the elite quote-unquote freshman recruits. And then it's the, the veterans who, while some may have been good in one aspect, you saw Tiger struggle a little bit in both sides. You had Hawkes who struggled to shoot the ball in the first game, you'd want you rather have him closer to a 50% average from the floor for Hawkes. At least 50% the better. And then you have Jalen Clark, who comes in, and again, one steal through two games for a guy who has been quoted himself as saying he wants to break the single game, single season steal marks from Ty said to even reach the number two mark, which is held by Darren Collison. And what do those two guards do? Well, those two guards played in national championship games, one leading his team to a title, the other one in Derek Collison amongst that legendary Ben Halland era in the mid-2000s where the Bruins went to three Final Fours in a row. If he, wants to be, if he wants to be that elite of a defender, as Mick Cronin says, his team will go and be better defensively depending on how far Jalen Clark is willing to go individually. This is kind of before everything in the season. How far Jalen Clark can take the team defensively will be an impactful game. Tiger, not the best of weekends, as I already said. Shooting, playing a lot of minutes, trying to get him off his feet. In the end, Campbell didn't shoot the ball too well as much as Mick Cronin wants him to be that scorer. And what he at least did against San Diego State in the closed-door scrimmage, putting up a lot of points, I believe 20-30 to against San Diego State off the top of my head, and then hit the three ball. Hasn't exactly translated to on-court success, especially against the big teams just yet, as the Bruins, not exactly searching for offense, but searching for answers. And do we have those answers yet? McCronin, maybe not yet, 
But this is kind of what the Bruins do with their skits. And I'll tell you about that. And you can bet on it for sure. Yeah, right. You can bet on it. As we can tell you that Bet Online is your number one source for your sports betting information with stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. With football, basketball, the World Cup, with soccer, esports, they've got it all with Bet Online. If you love sports podcasts with betting elements in it, Bet Online's got you covered there as well. The fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device. Look at Bet Online and see. All right, Bet Online. That's where the game starts. And where this final segment starts for Locked On UCLA, Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer, recapping the weekend against Baylor and Illinois. And once again, the Bruins falling 79 to 70 against Illinois, a game where they led by nine at the half, got outscored by 18 in half number two, allowing 51 points. Watching Terrence Shannon Jr. for the fighting line, I put up 29 on eight of nine shooting from three, getting red hot with a double-double to put the fighting Illini with a sellout crowd practically full of Illinois fans rooting on Illinois to continue to be up to undefeated until that point and go face Virginia in the Continental Tire Championship game. Bruins fell victim to poor free throw shooting in game one and lackluster defense in that second half where UCLA also shot, then shoot the ball well against Illinois. 37% overall from the field and 50% on 14 free throw attempts throughout the game. And despite Illinois turning the basketball over 21 times, UCLA almost lost by double digits. That's not a game you should be losing when your opponent turns it over 21 times on a neutral site. You should not be losing by nine. Meanwhile, against Baylor, the Bruins. Back and forth, the game that was very tight. They played a little bit better. The score was tied 19. Was score was tied nine times. Thirteen lead changes. The Bruins were getting half their points, more than half their points in the paint. Forty-two of UCLA seventy-five came in the paint, but they were ice cold from three in that last game of the weekend. Four of fifteen from downtown, where Tiger Campbell, Jaime Hawkins Jr., and Jalen Clark all. 0 for 3, and your veterans can't be going 0 for 3. If they're taking six shots, you'd like them to make two of those, and you make two, that equals six points from three. What'd you lose by? You lost by five. That could be the difference in the game. Also, Jalen Clark, who has showcased a three-point shooting ability in these first few games, didn't make a three in either of the two Bruin losses. So UCLA this year, albeit very small sample size, undefeated when Clark hits at least one three, and winless when he hasn't hit a three or also doesn't get a steal or gets one or few ste- fewer steals. So when it comes to three-point shooting and his steals, maybe those go hand-in-hand in, hand in terms of UCLA's one, offensive success, and two, maybe more importantly, what Mick Cronin is very angry at, defensive prowess, which they didn't show, at giving up almost 80 points per game to both Illinois and Baylor over the two games in the weekend. For Mick Cronin, looking back now in his tenure, the Bruins always have stumbles like this. This isn't a team that's been undefeated. As I've already mentioned before on this episode, UCLA, before conference or in the early going, 5-3 and three in his initial campaign at UCLA, 2019 to 2020, including a home loss, two home losses, to Hofstra and Cal State Fullerton, falling to 8-9 and nine in the season during the early portion of Pac-12 play. Well, what did Mick Cronin do? All he did was rebound, get his team and the Bruins to 19 and 12, 12 and 6 in Pac-12 play, and put themselves in line for a potential lengthy Pac-12 tournament run and at the edge of what would have been an NCAA tournament berth that first season, kind of similar to that 20 and 21 campaign where Mick Cronin was battling, and the Bruins were battling, battling, battling. UCLA was, you know, doing their best in that first year as he took over for Steve Alford. And then what happened year two? Well, a much better start as we were introduced to Johnny Juzang in company, 2020 to 2021, where the Bruins put themselves on the map 
Despite losing by 15 to San Diego State to start that weird COVID season, which was delayed into Thanksgiving in 20 to 21, had to go to triple overtime to beat Pepperdine, got on a roll before losing to Ohio State, and then eventually, at one portion in the season, lost four in a row, barely snuck in the tournament. And what happened? UCLA clawed from behind to beat Michigan State, got on a roll in March, and UCLA took it all the way until the literal final second against Gonzaga in April of 21 to put themselves on the map, kind of back on the map with a Final Four run. What happened in last year's campaign with all the expectations for UCLA and company with the return of Bernard, Hawkes, Juzang, Cody Riley coming back for one final ride. UCLA ended up going 27-8. and Not as good as some may have hoped, but still a successful campaign despite the underachieving Bruins getting to the Sweet 16. Last year, UCLA with a stretch of a losing three out of four, losing at Arizona. That wasn't too bad, although it did come about a week or so after they beat Arizona pretty badly at home. UCLA went on the road, lost by 10 to Zona. That crushing triple overtime defeat at ASU and then losing on the road to USC, where then UCLA rebounded. And outside the Oregon loss, the Bruins found themselves winning 8 of 10 at going into the NCAA tournament and then turning it on before falling in the Sweet 16. So this is a team and a program that Mick Cronin always finds the little hidden cracks, and they stumble here and there. That's college basketball at the transfer portal in this day and age, and the one and done's kind of now mixing and blending with the NIL deals and everything in between. How college basketball is a little bit tighter than it's ever been. I already mentioned, let's mention it again. 11 of the 12 Pac-12 teams have a loss in Arizona very well, if they fall in Maui in the esteemed Maui Jim Maui tournament this week, I believe they next have San Diego State, all 12 Pac-12 teams could already have a loss, and we're not even truly more than two and a half weeks in the season. Nine of 12 teams in the Pac-12 have lost to a mid-major. Again, got to bring up that point. To a mid-major, they had the SWAC versus Pac-12 Legacy Series, and quite honestly, the SWAC took it to the Pac-12 this year, with Cal hanging back in the rear in most of the Pac-12 teams, most recently Oregon State, dropping to Portland State, falling down to these mid-majors. And while UCLA's losses aren't anywhere near those, it's knowing the Bruins will be fine when it comes down to Pac-12 play in barring falling to big upsets. If the Bruins can right the ship, you know they still have the Maryland game. The Bruins still have the Kentucky neutral site game, albeit on the each. The, on the East Coast, a sneaky tough Pac-12 opener at Stanford in a week from now. Yeah, just about a week from now. And some big tests. You get Bellarmine, who yeah, they don't dribble the basketball. We'll preview them, but they're a sneaky mid-major. And then also the likes of Pepperdine, who is a good team out of the WCC this year, it seems like. UCLA, they'll be fine, but they'll only go as far as either one, the veterans can help develop the freshmen, or two, depending if Amari Bailey and the Dembona, which one of those two goes into dominant freak mode, and which is a good thing, and dominates the game. Which one of these freshmen can help find their roles? Which part of this team can find themselves in which roles? Is it going to be Tiger Campbell taking 15, 16, 20 shots a game? Maybe that's not the way. Maybe he turns more back into a facilitator. And they find ways to get Singleton more open shots for three and let him launch it more times. Continue to feed Hawkes. Maybe Bona can find more easy shots and easy points in the paint with his athleticism. Maybe it's Dylan Andrews who can give Tiger Campbell the breather and get him going and get him confidence going forward. Will UCLA enlarge in their rotation or shrink it? Those are all Mick Cronin questions that he generally has answered by the time the calendar flips to March. This year in 2023. Those answers aren't found yet, but the problems growing a little bit, but that's why you play these big games. You grow, you move forward, and you learn. If you haven't learned by now, go check on Locked On Sports today and make that your second listen. And they got big game recaps, they've got big time takes of the day, and also the big take of my day is go subscribe to Locked On UCLA. Thanks for your support. Thanks for turning it on. Get those hands in the air, Bruins fans. 
And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see, LA, UCLA, fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins.